Hi, this is Mark Merza with the Georgia National Day of Prayer. I'm here with Mel Blackaby. He's the pastor of First Baptist Jonesboro. And he just took us through this wonderful home that they have turned into a house of prayer. Mel, would you share with us the story about this? Absolutely. It's a phenomenal house. It was built in the mid-1850s, pre-Civil War. You can imagine life around here back in those days. Uh, we got a hold of this building, which is really in the center of our campus, and had this vision that it would become a house of prayer. Uh, we have had a prayer room, but it seemed like it was in the back side of another building and an old parking lot. It just was hard to find. And I wanted something with more prominence to really resemble the fact that this is important. And so we were able to get a hold of this house, totally renovate it, uh, several different rooms. We got a prayer room. We got group meetings. We have all kinds of things where our church can gather and to pray mm -hmm. all through the week. And it's been an amazing thing to watch how God has not only given us this beautiful place that is an inspiration. When you walk in this place, it just inspires you to spend time with God. Mm -hmm. And people are coming. And people are praying, and we are seeing answers to prayer. Amen. I'm glad to hear that. You also shared with us something special about the woodwork and about the brick. Yeah. Tell us about that. I think it's fascinating. This, this house was the first brick house in the entire area. Mm. And so when it was first built, it, the style of the home was to be plastered over the brick, so nobody ever saw it. So from the day that this place was built, nobody had ever seen the brick. Uh, but when we got the place and we started to work on it, had all the lead paint, they had to strip everything off, and it exposed the brick for the very first time since 1850. And so we decided to keep it exposed. It's just so beautiful. And the woodwork uh, came out of the flooring. The floor was kind of messed up. We thought we could salvage it, but we really couldn't. So we tore all that out, put a new floor in. But we took those old beams that were holding up the floor, and we repositioned them for, for the fireplace mantles, for some doors, some pillars that we have here. You see the old axe marks, yeah. uh, this old original wood, uh, back from 1850. And what was fascinating for me when I got thinking about it, and I was sitting here, and people would come in and see how beautiful the brick was, and look at that gorgeous wood, and they kept talking about that. It dawned on me that the workers who actually laid the brick and put those wood beams in, they were never supposed to be seen. Mm. Uh, that work was going to be hidden below the floor, plastered over. Nobody would ever see the brickwork and the woodwork from the common laborers back before the Civil War even. Could they have ever imagined that someday people would be walking through and touching the brick and touching the wood and just amazed at how beautiful it is? It just reminds me of how God can take our work. Amen. Maybe nobody sees, hard labor, and maybe we think that nobody ever would see it or appreciate it or acknowledge it, but God has a way of taking everything we do for the kingdom mm -hmm. and use it for his glory. Uh, and I just pray that God would take this place and use it for his glory and take our lives mm -hmm. and use it for his glory. Amen. You know, David Franklin often talks about, is prayer making a difference? Is what you are doing making a difference? You know, it may not be seen today but you are going to get to heaven and see how your prayers have made a difference. Mel, thank you for sharing this with us. Awesome. God bless you, my friend. You bet. Thank you.